peacocks is Aunt Mr. Bingley. Well, he's on the right, and on the left is his sister. And the person with the quizzical brow? That is his good friend, Mr. Darcy. <gasps> it's miserable, poor soul. Miserable he may be, but poor he most certainly is not. Look, here's the thing about being rich, okay? It's f***ing great. My eldest daughter, you know, Mrs. Bennett, Miss Jane Bennett, Elizabeth, and Miss Mary Bennett. It is a pleasure. And may I introduce Mr. Darcy of Pemberley in Derbyshire. Mr. Bingley. Can read, of course. And, and I'm not suggesting you can't read out of doors. Can you dance, Mr. Darcy? Not if I can help it. You are dancing with the only handsome girl in the room. She is the most beautiful creature I have ever beheld. But her sister Elizabeth is very agreeable. Fairly tolerable, I dare say. Not handsome enough to tempt me. It's my Jane who is considered the beauty of no, the mama, county. Mama, mama, when she was only 15, there was a gentleman so much in love with her that I was sure he would make her an offer. However, he did write her some very pretty verses. And that put pay to it. I wonder who first discovered the power of poetry in driving away love. <laughs> I thought the poetry was the food of love. Of a fine, stout love, it may. But if it is only a vague inclination, I'm convinced one poor sonnet will kill it stone dead. So what do you recommend to encourage affection? Dancing. Even if one's partner is barely tolerable. Oh! Elizabeth, did you walk here? I did. I'm so sorry. How is my sister? She's upstairs. Thank you. Word is indeed applied too liberally. I cannot boast of knowing more than half a dozen women in all my acquaintance that are truly accomplished. Nor I, to be sure. Goodness, you must comprehend a great deal in the idea. I do. Absolutely. She must have a thorough knowledge of music, singing, drawing, dancing, and the modern languages to deserve the word. And something in her air and manner of walking. And of course, she must improve her mind by extensive reading. Thought we wouldn't notice. But we did. I'm no longer surprised at your knowing only six accomplished women. I rather wonder now at your knowing any. Are you so severe on your own sex? I never saw such a woman. She would certainly be a fearsome thing to behold. Miss Elizabeth, let us take a turn about the room. You're too proud, Mr. Darcy. And would you consider pride a fault or a virtue? That I couldn't say. Because we're doing our best to find a fault in you. Maybe it's that I find it hard to forgive the follies and vices of others or their offences against me. My good opinion, once lost, is lost forever. Oh dear, I cannot tease you about that. What a shame, for I dearly love to laugh. A family trait, I think.
Mr. Bingley, is it true that you have promised to hold a ball here at Netherfield? A ball? Um... It would be an excellent way to meet new friends. You could invite the militia. They're excellent company. Oh, do you hold a ball, Kitty? I think a ball is a perfectly irrational way to gain new acquaintance. It would be better if conversation instead of dancing with the order of the day. Indeed, much more rational, but rather less like a ball. Mr. Elizabeth. Whoa, whoa. Look, Mr. Bingley. Mr. Bingley. I was just on my way to your house. Mr. Bingley, how do you like my ribbons for your ball? <laughs> Very beautiful. Be sure to invite Mr. Wickham. He is a credit to his profession. You can't invite people to other people's balls. I guess I never met a more pleasant gentleman in all my years. Did you see how he don't May I have the next dance, Miss Elizabeth? It's all you invent to encourage affection. Dancing. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. May I have the next dance, Miss Elizabeth? You may. It's your turn to say something, Mr. Darcy. I talked about the dance. Now you ought to remark on the size of the room or the number of couples. I'm perfectly happy to oblige. Please advise me of what you would like most to hear. That reply will do for present. Perhaps by and by I may observe that private balls are much pleasanter than public ones. For now we may remain silent. You talk as a rule while dancing? No. No, I prefer to be unsociable and taciturn. Makes it all so much more enjoyable, don't you think? And I dare say that is an irreversible event. It is. Why do you ask such a question? To make out your character, Mr. Darcy. And what have you discovered? Very little. I hear such different accounts of you as puzzle me exceedingly. I hope to afford you more clarity in the future. Darcy, I had no idea we had the honour. Miss Elizabeth, I'm a guest here. You know my nephew? Yes, ma'am. I had the pleasure of meeting your nephew in Hertfordshire. Colonel Fitzwilliam, how do you do? Mr. Collins, you can't sit next to your wife. Move. Over there. Thought we wouldn't notice, but we did. I trust your family is in good health, Miss Elizabeth. They are, thank you. 
Has your governess left you? We never had a governess. No governess. Five daughters brought up at home without a governess. I never heard such a thing. Mm. Your mother must have been quite a slave to your education. Not at all, Lady Catherine. Your younger sisters, are they out in society? Yes, ma'am, all. All? But all five out at once? Oh, that's very odd. And you only the second? How does Georgiana get along, Darcy? Bruh. She plays very well. I hope she practices. No excellence can be acquired without constant practice. I've told Mrs. Collins this. Though you have no instrument of your own, you're very welcome to come to Rosings and play on the piano forte in the housekeeper's room. Oh, thank you. You'll Lynch. be in nobody's way in that part of the house. You mean to frighten me, Mr. Darcy, by coming in all your state to hear me? But I won't be alarmed, even if your sister does play so well. I'm well enough acquainted with you, Miss Elizabeth, to know that I cannot alarm you, even should I wish it. <sighs> what was my friend like in Hertfordshire? You really care to know? Prepare yourself for something very dreadful. The first time I saw him at the assembly, he danced with nobody at all. Even though gentlemen were scarce and there was more than one young lady sitting down without a partner. I knew nobody beyond my own party. Oh, and nobody can be introduced in a ballroom. Fitzwilliam, I need you. I do not have the talent of conversing easily with people I have never met before. <laughs> you should take your aunt's advice and practice. Please do be seated. This is a charming house. Good day, Miss Elizabeth. It's been a pleasure. What on earth have you done to poor Mr. Darcy? Why are you the way that you are? His closest friend, Charles Bingley. I think it was a family that was considered unsuitable. Miss Elizabeth, I have struggled in vain and I can bear it no longer. These past months have been a torment. I came to Rosings with the single object of seeing you. I had to see you. I have fought against my better judgment, my family's expectation, the inferiority of your birth, my rank and circumstance, all these things, and I'm willing to put them aside and ask you to end my agony. I don't understand. I love you. Most ardently. 
Please do me the honor of accepting my hand. Bruh. Do you think that anything might tempt me to accept the man who has ruined, perhaps forever, the happiness of a most beloved sister? It's me. Hi. I'm the problem. It's me. It was made perfectly clear that an advantageous marriage... Did my sister give that impression? No, no. No, there was, however, I have to admit, the matter of your family. Our want of connection. Mr. Bingley didn't seem to vex no, himself about that. No, it was more than that. that. How, sir? It was the lack of propriety shown by your mother, your three younger sisters, even on occasion your father. Forgive me. You and your sister, I must exclude. Bruh. And what about Mr. Wickham? Bruh. Mr. Wickham, so this is your opinion of me. Thank you for explaining so fully. Perhaps these offences might have been overlooked had not your pride been hurt my by my pride. honesty and admitting scruples about our relationship. Could you expect me to rejoice in the inferiority of your circumstances? And those are the words of a gentleman. From the first moment I met you, your arrogance and conceit, your selfish disdain for the feelings of others made me realise that you were the last man in the world I could ever be prevailed upon to marry. Forgive me, madam, for taking up so much of your time. What was that? <laughs> Hello there. to leave you this. I shall not renew the sentiments which were so disgusting to you, but if I may, I will address the two offenses you have laid against me. Yeah. I'm in Devonshire with my aunt and uncle. And are you having a pleasant trip? Very pleasant. Tomorrow we go to Matlock. Tomorrow? Are you staying at Lambton? Yes, at the Rose and Crown. Yes. intrude. They said that the house was open for visitors. I had, I had no idea. May I see you back to the village? No. I'm very fond of walking. Yes. Yes, I know. Bye, 
Mr. Darcy. My brother has told me so much about you. I feel as if we are friends already. Can you stop? You. What a beautiful pianoforte. My brother gave it to me. He shouldn't have. Yes, I should. Oh, very well then. <laughs> Easily persuaded, is she not? Your unfortunate brother once had to put up with my playing for a whole evening. But he says you play so well. Stop talking! Then he has perjured himself most profoundly. <laughs> No, I said played quite well. Oh, quite well is not very well. I'm satisfied. Do you play duets, Miss Elizabeth? Only when forced. Brother, you must force her. Bruh. <laughs> has run away with Mr. Wickham. Mr. Wickham. This is my fault. If only I had exposed Wickham when I should. No. No, this is my fault. I might have prevented all this merely by being open with my sisters. Has anything been done to recover her? My father has gone to London. But I know very well that nothing can We have not the smallest hope. Would I could help you? So I think it is too late. This is grave indeed. I will leave you. Goodbye. I'm afraid we must go at once. Mr. Darcy and Mr. Bingley, ma'am. Glad we are to see you, Mr. Bingley. There have been a great many changes since you went away. Miss Lucas is married and settled. And one of my own daughters, too. You will have seen it in the papers, though it was not put in as it ought to have been. Very short. Nothing about her family. Yes, yes, I did hear of it. I, I offer my congratulations. But it is very hard to have my Lydia taken away from me. Mr. Wickham has been transferred to Newcastle, wherever that is. I beg you will come here and shoot as many as you please. Thank you. Mr. Bennett will be vastly happy to oblige you. And we'll save all the best of the coffees for you. Excellent. Are you well, Mr. Darcy? Quite well, thank you. I hope that the weather stays fine for your sport. I return to town tomorrow. So soon? My Jane looks well. Does she not? Does indeed. Well, we must be going, I think. Darcy, it's been very pleasant to see you all again. Miss Elizabeth, Miss Bennett. You must come again, for when you were in town last winter, you promised to have a family dinner with us. I've not forgot, you see. At least three courses. Bruh. Excuse me. Miss Bennett. Mr. Bingley.
your feelings are still what they were last April, tell me so at once. My affections and wishes have not changed. But one word from you will silence me forever. If, however, your feelings have changed, I would have to tell you. You have bewitched me, body and soul, and I love and love and love you. I never wish to be parted from you from this day on. At the door, please, Elizabeth. Yes! 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 How are you this evening, my dear? Very well. Only I wish you would not call me my dear. Why? Because it's what my father always calls my mother when he's cross about something. What endearments am I allowed? Well, let me think. Lizzie for every day. My Pearl for Sundays. And Goddess Divine, but only on very special occasions. <sighs> and what shall I call you when I'm cross? Mrs. Darcy? No. No. You may only call me Mrs. Darcy when you are completely and perfectly and incandescently happy. And how are you this evening, Mrs. Darcy? Mrs. Darcy. This is Darcy. This is Darcy. 